Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And today I am in Illuminar Neo and I've got a uh, photo from Iceland that I took on the Illuminar photo camp there a couple years ago. And I'm going to make a dramatic black and white with a pop of red color. Let's get into it. Here is the photo. This is one of our campers, Chris Quinn, who's a great photographer uh, and a very nice lady as well. She was kind enough to stand there and pose for us because that red, let's just be honest, it really pops. So we thought, hey, let's do some stuff here. So I'm going to go in and do some stuff and uh, edit this photo. I'm going to start with a little contrast. I'm going to take the highlights down. So this is basic stuff where I'm just kind of balancing the light. So something about like that. And shadows are going to come up quite a bit. So maybe something about like that really brightens the photo, doesn't it? Um, quite a change there. Uh, I'm going to leave the temperature and tint the same. But if you can tell, there's a lot of distortion. So I'm going to go into optics. I'm going to click auto distortion corrections and you give that a second and you can see it fixed that distortion for me nicely got rid of the vignetting and that sort of thing now it is slightly crooked i think let me just go into crop and fix that i think that looks good i'm going to hit enter and i also see a few dust spots i'm going to go ahead and select remove dust spots and get those out of the photo as well Okay, we're done with that. And now I'm gonna move on to the fun, which is converting this to a black and white. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So of course that will go in and clearly make it a black and white. But while I'm at it, let me show you by the way, lots of blue in the scene. So a great way to adjust a black and white is take a look at the colors that exist in the scene. And then once you've got a black and white, if you want to, you can adjust the luminance of those colors. So lots of blue, you can see by moving the blue luminance, kind of what's happening here. So I'm actually gonna take this down uh, just a little bit, just to get a, a little bit darker in the blues. Um, and then for the red, I'm gonna bring this back and I'm gonna do, uh, go to about a 78, 79, high 70s, basically, just kind of popping that red and really bringing it out. And if you look at the before and after, there it is before and there it is now. So I'm looking good there, I'm happy with it. That red's really popping. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm pretty pleased, but there's a lot of things I want to do. So one of the great things, of course, is that you can reuse tools. So I'm going to go in here and start with Accent AI. And uh, again, I'm doing a dramatic black and white. So I don't necessarily recommend going this high, but um, I went that high this time. And what I was saying about the reusing tools, I'm going to use Accent AI again later in a specific area, but I think it really helps the photo. So if you look at the before and after, there it is before, there it is now. So I think we're coming along just fine. I'm going to pop down to Super Contrast, one of my favorite tools. You've probably, if you've been here before, you've heard me talk about it quite a bit. But I'm going to dial these into the settings that I selected. And this was all just experimentation. For me, Super Contrast is really just experimentation. I start moving the tools and then I start adjusting the balance to kind of see what happens. Like if I go to the right here on highlights, it kind of goes one way. I'm gonna go left though, because I kind of want to pop those a little bit. I think they're looking pretty nice right there. The midtones uh, balance, actually I'm gonna end up going slightly to the right. And then the shadows balance, I am going to the right as well. So if you look at the before and after, you can see there it is before and there it is after richer it's more contrasty but it's a richer black and white a bit more dramatic as i said at the beginning kind of going for drama here so one more time before and current state i'm loving that and now i'm going to go play with these reds a little bit so i've got some color in the photo i'm going to go into hsl and i'm going to start with the hue of the red and you can see when i drag this one way and the other you can kind of see how it's impacting the photo uh, or I should say the red. So I'm going to take that to about a negative 29, a little less from the like candy apple red and a little bit more towards, uh, you know, maybe plum kind of red. I'm not sure what the, uh, what the color would be called. I'm actually going to take the saturation down a little bit. It's pretty intensely red, but the main reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to lift the luminance of the red and really kind of brighten that up. And if I didn't take the saturation down, those two things together would have been really over the top. I mean, it's, it's red, uh, clearly, but um, if I didn't make those other changes, it, it would have been, uh, I feel like, too much. So there it is before. You can see it's more of an orangey kind of red, and now it's more of kind of a, a pure red, uh, if you will. So that, uh, that hue shift really helped with that, as long, uh, excuse me, along with these 
other things. Now, you may notice there's a little bit of red that's kind of bleeding onto the fur. So I'm gonna go ahead and close color and I'm gonna open it again. And then I'm just gonna take the saturation to zero and I'm just gonna paint in that zero saturation to this fur. So let me do that real quick. You can see as you paint along here, I'm just applying a mask, brushing in that negative saturation. So I'm basically removing color from the fur by painting it in uh, and uh, you know using a negative 100 saturation. You can see it's it's basically gone. I could probably refine these edges a little bit, but in the interest of time, we'll pretend that's a really good job. I do recommend you take your time, and it's kind of driving me nuts. I see that little bit there, and I see a tiny bit here. Um, that's pretty solid overall. I'm pleased with that, but that's, again, the beauty of using these tools multiple times is I masked in the color changes, uh, or excuse me, I didn't mask it in. I used color the first time with the, the hue, the saturation, and the luminance shift in the red to really make that pop. And then I used color a second time to come in and basically remove the red that was kind of bleeding into the fur around the top of the hood of the coat. So lots of uh, fun, flexible stuff there. Now structure, I'm gonna go into structure AI and I'm gonna give that a low 30s. And what I wanna do is mask that in. Oops, uh, so just make sure you're on paint mask. I'm gonna increase my brush. And again, I'm gonna do this pretty quickly, but I'm gonna brush that into these rocks here in the foreground just to give them a little oomph. And then I want to do the same to the mountains there in the distance. Okay, the rocks look good. Now I'm gonna come over here and hit some of these mountains as well, just because these are the rough kind of things and I like to apply structure to things that feel like they need to have a little bit of rough roughness to them or, or that already uh, have roughness to them. And, and these definitely do. So I've applied that. And if you look at the before and after, there it is before and there it is after a little bit of an enhancement to those two uh, rocky areas with Structure AI. Now, I've closed that, I'm gonna go get it again, but this time I'm gonna go negative, and this time I am, once again, on paint mask, and all I'm gonna do is just paint that into the sky, because I just like smoother skies, and so using these tools again and again just lets you stack effects uh, with the same tool, and so you can just get a lot of control over your photo. So I'm just masking in this negative structure to the sky, and then I added positive structure to the rocks uh, in the foreground as well as the distant mountains. So that's that. So one more time, before and after, just slightly smoothing out the sky, simply just something I like. Now I used Accent AI earlier, so once again I'm doubling down on Accent AI, and I'm gonna do something that you might not uh, expect me to do, which is I'm going to 100, and I know that's over the top and kind of crazy. It is a dramatic black and white, but I don't want that everywhere. What I really want is, once again, just have a paint mask. I just wanna add that 100 extra Accent AI just to the tops of these mountains, simply because they're cool looking, um, and I'm just kind of cranking in cranking them up uh, and amping it up. It's obviously a, a you know dramatic monochrome, but adding this extra Accent AI, which is kind of like a super slider, you've heard me talk about that before, it just adds a bit more to that scene. So if you look at the before, those mountains and the after, just a little extra oomph, just a little more drama. And you know, I think that your eye in the photo, you're obviously gonna be drawn to the red because you know, light, detail, and color, those things grab attention. So I think red in a black and white photo is definitely gonna grab attention. And my eye goes to her, and then it goes across to the mountains there. I want those mountains to really stand out. So that's why I used Accent AI a second time and just masked it in right there. So I'm gonna close that, and now I'm gonna go back to Super Contrast. I know I used it already once, but I'm gonna use it again, and this time I'm gonna do about a 44 there. I'm gonna do about a 43 over here, and I'm doing about a 49 here on the uh, the shadows contrast, and then some minor adjustments to balance. I think I went about a one there. I did about a negative four here, so nothing major, but I did do something kind of major here, which was about a 49. Uh, so if I show you that, let me show you the before and after. There it is before and there it is after. So again, just amping up the drama using Super Contrast again. So I use Color twice, Accent AI twice, Super Contrast twice, and also Structure AI twice. Just lots of power and flexibility. And there it is before that last uh, Super Contrast move, and there it is now, and that is my full edit, my friends. Let me show you what we started with because we've come a really long way, to be honest. Um, 
the photo looked like that. So obviously we did optical corrections in Develop Raw, uh, straightened the photo, took some spots out, things like that, kind of the basic getting the canvas uh, set kind of moves, um, and then did a bunch of other fun, creative things, right? Monochrome with the pop of red, adjusted the red, the tones, the hue, saturation, luminance of the red, masked it out of the uh, fur around the hood of the coat, and then just went over the top with dramatic black and white kind of stuff. That's my edit for today, my friends. I hope it gives you some ideas. Lots of power, lots of flexibility. Frankly, just a lot of fun in Luminar Neo. And one of the best things about it, of course, is, hey, you can use these tools again and again and again. So if you're doing something like this, where you're amping up the drama, there's no better way to add drama than to use a tool that creates drama and use it again and again and again. So that's the beauty and the power of Neo and the way it's set up to allow you to reuse these tools. Hope it gives you some ideas one more time, my friends. There's my base photo, and that's my end state. Thanks for watching. Hope it gives you some ideas. You guys take care of yourselves. I will see you in the next video. And until then, adios.